Zones of control. Combat units exert zones of control. Leaders do not. Zones of control and facing. Combat units exert zones of control through their front and flank hex sides. They do not exert a zone of control into their rear hex sides. Exception, routed units do not exert zones of control. So in this case, I have placed blank blue markers um, to indicate the zone of control of the parliamentarian horse, or dragoon unit. They uh, extend into the front two hexes and to the flank, or, yeah, flank hexes of that unit. As per the rules, routed units do not exert zones of control at all. Zone of control, zone of control extension restrictions. Zones of control do not extend through hex sides or into hexes into which that combat unit could not normally move. In this case, the Dragoon unit cannot enter the woods, which is indicated by the light pale green hex to its front. However, it could enter the uh, clear terrain to its right and or to its flank and then the other two elevated clear terrain hexes to its left flanks and front. Because it can move into those hexes, it is not allowed to move into the woods hexes. Zones of control and out of command units. Out of command combat units may not leave an enemy zone of control. The Royalist Dragoon unit here is indicated as being out of command. The blue hexes or the blue counters represent the Parliamentarian Dragoon unit and its zones of control. So in this instance, the Royalist B unit may not leave or may not leave the enemy zone of control. Effects of zone of control. The unit must stop when it enters an enemy zone of control. It may not move further in that movement phase regardless of how many movement points it has remaining. Example, just say this unit started here, it goes one and then two. It has to stop because it enters the, um, the parliamentarian Dragoon unit zone of control. A friendly combat unit negates the effect of an enemy zone of control for purposes of tracing a command span, but it does not do so for movement or retreat purposes. So in this example, this unit is still in command because it can trace through its own unit, even though it is in an enemy zone of control of this unit, back to its leader. However, if this unit had to retreat, it could not do so because it could not retreat into a legal space even though this friendly unit is negating the zone of control or not negating the zone of control of this royalist unit. Leaving a zone of control. A combat unit that begins a movement phase in an enemy zone of control may move out of that zone of control if it has a retreat, stand, muster, or reserve command. and it is in command. Routed units may also leave an enemy zone of control. In this example, this unit can move out of the of the Royalist Dragoons zone of control by turning freely within the hex because a unit is uh, a unit spends no movement points to change facing within the its own hex at the start of its movement phase or during at the end of the melee phase I believe. So it would change all of its uh, change its facing spinning uh, no move, movement points then when it got here I suppose it could then go one to enter the hex, two to change from here to here and then three and I believe that would be a legal move In this case, however, if this unit wanted to leave an enemy zone of control that is exerted by this unit, 
and these two. Um, you have to stop upon first entering an enemy zone of control. I do not see any rule saying that you can move or cannot move from one enemy zone of control to another or prohibiting that. <clears throat> so I would assume that this unit could spend all of its movement points. Well, not all of its movement points. It could, it could change facing freely within its hex to any vertex, vertex and then move the one Entering this unit zone of control, and then change side hex uh, vertexes one, two, three, for a total expenditure of uh, what? One, two, three, four. And that would put him there. He has to stop when he enters this guy's zone of, or that horse's zone of control. Uh, you can change facing in the enemy zone of control. As long as you abide by the combat unit, may change facing by pointing toward any vertex in its hex, changing facing after melee combat or while still in its starting hex during movement, never costs anything. A unit that changes facing in the hex it just entered must spend one movement point. It doesn't say it has to be per vertex either. So technically, this unit could freely change its facing in the hex it starts in, enter the enemy zone of control, or enter this hex for one, which is in the enemy zone of control, spin two, another movement point for two, to just turn around in this hex, and just, you know, there you go. So is that uh, legal, historical, whatever? That seems to be what the rule implies. Okay, stacking. Stacking refers to having more than one combat unit in a hex at any given time. There are no stacking restrictions for leaders and overall leaders. Stacking limits apply at all times during the turn. Unless stacked together at the beginning of a scenario, only one combat unit is allowed per hex. A combat unit may not move to another combat unit. So, what we have here basically is, if this unit and this unit started the game stacked per the scenario rules or per setup, they can remain that way throughout the game if they want to. However, if they become unstacked, whether voluntarily or in, involuntarily, they may never stack again. So this unit may never combine with that unit again or stack with it. Just like down here. Dragoon A, if it has to route or retreat or whatever, it can never again stack with uh, unit A or C or any other of its units, allied units. In addition, stacked units, stacked combat units are treated as one combat unit while stacked together. A stack moves with the movement allowance of its slower component combat unit. Combat units may not change their position in a stack. The lower combat unit in the stack cannot be affected by combat until the top unit is destroyed and leaders do not count for stacking purposes. Stacking and morale checks. For purposes of morale, a stack checks morale separately for each unit, starting with the top unit. And therein ends the uh, rules on leaders facing zone of control, stacking, that kind of thing. Uh, what we have left basically is, uh, let's see, orders, movement, a little bit on combat and rally, and that's pretty much it. One of the major areas will be commands um, and how orders and commands uh, relate to each other. I'm going to run through the sequence of play real quickly, and I think after that it would be best to just go ahead and start playing the game and get an idea of how it feels and how it works and we will cover any um, areas in more detail as they come up. 
So, sequence of play. Winspy uses the following sequence of play for each game turn. The player whose turn it is is referred to as the phasing player. The opponent is the non-phasing player. The scenarios list which player moves first. A game turn consists of the following. You know, I don't know if I did uh, <clears throat> game scale. I don't know if I passed over that or not, but I want to touch on game scale real quickly. Each hex is 100 to 115 yards across, and each string point represents 70 to 100 men. All right, back to the sequence of play. We have the order phase. Players may attempt to change the current commands that each or any of their leaders are currently using. <clears throat> B. First player movement phase. The first player checks to see whether any units are out of command. Those units out of command are marked with an out of command marker. The first player then moves all eligible units that he desires to move. The non-phasing player may conduct cavalry charges during the phasing player's movement. <clears throat> C. First player combat phase. Fire combat phase. Defensive fire. All non-phasing units that have enemy units within their range may fire. Offensive fire. All phasing units that have enemy units within their range may fire. Melee. During the melee phase, the attacker may conduct melee attacks against adjacent enemy units. The attacker checks morale of attacking units. The defender checks morale of defending units if any attacking units pass their morale check. Melee combat is resolved between attacking and defending units that have passed morale in steps A and B. The rules booklet says steps 1 and 2, but um, there is no testing of morale uh, during the fire combat phase other than through results of fire. However, I believe they mean in the melee phase the attacker checks and if he fails then the defender doesn't have to check if the attacker passes then the defender will have to make morale checks so there is a what I believe is some errata there but nothing crucial then we have the first player rally phase the first player attempts to rally eligible routed units then we have the second player victory check phase second player checks to see whether a victory die roll must be made Then we have sections F through G, second player movement, combat, rally, same as B through D, and I, first player victory check phase, same as E. And from here on out, we have, like I said, orders, fire combat, uh, melee, that type of thing, charge, counter charge, whatever, and rally, and then with victory, uh, Victory conditions. So, like I say, I'm going to go ahead and just start playing the scenario, and we will uh, discuss various rule sections as we come uh, come across them. I think that'll give a little bit better idea of what's going on, and not be quite so boring. So, when I come back, we will start with the royalist player turn because a special scenario. Scenario. That's just that's what we have. We have a scenario. We have a number of turns, 12. The Royalist, or the White, is the first player. Setup, no units begin on the map. Units enter, see map for lo lactations. Uh, it should be locations, I would think. During the honing player's movement phase, according to the chart below. And we'll go into more depth with that when we start playing. Okay, let's play some wind speed. At least a turn or two. We're going to start with the order phase. However, since all units start off the map, I would assume, and they do not start with uh, any listed order, I assume they must have an order which would allow them to move um, closer to the enemy, so I have given all units an advance command. An advance command, you know, you know, all combat units in command using the advance command may move up to their full movement allowance during the movement phase. They must end the turn at least one hex closer or be adjacent to an enemy combat unit, i.e. they must move at least one hex unless they are already in an enemy zone of control. Combat units receive no melee combat die roll modifiers for having an advance command, so I think that's what we're going to have for both the um, 
Royalists and the Parliamentarians. So let's look over here. <coughs> Excuse me. At the Royalists players units that will start game turn one, moving onto the board. Um, we have. I'm not going to be able to spell this guy's name correctly, or pronounce this guy's name correctly, let alone spell it. Um, and it'd be nice if I could see it. Well, trust me. It's Witterington. Uh, is the guy's name, the commander, leader. Not overall leader, but leader. Uh, he has a movement allowance of, I think, eight. Or maybe ten on... Nope, just eight. These units are Dragoons, but they only have an eight movement allowance. So, I guess they will just move onto the board. Pretty much plain and simple. I'm going to double check the terrain chart here. <clears throat> Let's see what it costs exactly. Looks like it's going to cost me on the road one half a movement point. So they are going to enter on the road, moving uh, two hexes for every hex that they, uh, <clears throat> for every movement point that they spend. Um, there are two units here. They're both stacked. They're both stacked together and will remain stacked um, until a condition uh, indicates that they are no longer stacked, and then they may not stack again during the rest of the game. So I guess we'll just follow the road here. I better back up here. Uh, one half, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll stop at the crossroads here. <coughs> and we will still remain stacked. And the unit following it is also, the units following it are also, the next units following it are also stacked. One, three, four, four and a half, five, six, seven, uh, let's go seven, we'll pivot for eight, no, that's still not going to give me, we'll go seven. One, one, two, three, four, five, pivot, I don't have to pivot, so that'd be six, okay, seven, I just can't change facing <coughs> in this hex, not that I really want to, and last but not least, we have one lonely unit here, and we're going to move it. It's not stacked. It may never stack. Nor may it ever move through a hex, a friendly hex. <clears throat> stacked or not stacked. One, two, three, four, five to turn. Six, seven. Another one to turn at seven. And then we'll stop here at eight. And that is <coughs> the Royalist movement for turn one. Okay, so we will now move on to, well, I guess we already passed the order phase. We did the first player movement phase. Now we'll do the first player combat phase. There will be no combat or rally or victory uh, check. Neither unit can... Uh, Neither of the units are able to fire or melee an enemy unit, so that's going to pretty much end the Royalist player's movement. Or game turn. Uh, let's see, when can you change orders? At the beginning of each game, place a command marker on the order for which each command, uh, for each commander's units. Okay, uh, you can change command. You're in the order space. Okay, I guess that's pretty simple. <clears throat> it's early yet. So we will go to... Sorry for the shoddy camera. Uh, camera. 
Oh, shoddy for the sorry for the shoddy camera work. That I believe is what I was intending to say. Okay, all parliamentarian units have exactly the same order. They must move closer to an enemy. <clears throat> um, if no unit, and if no unit, if no enemy unit started the game on the board, then an advance command would be very hard to um, adhere to. If you can't move any closer to an enemy that isn't there. Perhaps there was another command that would uh, take care of that. <clears throat> anyway, I'm not that familiar with the game. So don't get your hopes up. Okay, looks like we have eight for these Dragoons as well. Both Cromwell and, uh, I'm going to butcher this guy's name, Vermoiden. Vermoiden will now uh, be able to enter the board. Well, let's go with Cromwell. He's stacked. His horse has a 10. So we will go 1. We'll pass through Winsby, which I don't think... Yeah, it just costs 1. I'm going to move Cromwell, so everybody will be pretty much with him. We'll just pretend they're all stacked. Otherwise, it's just going to be a mess. 1, 2, 3... Four, what am I doing? We're not on the road. Let's, let's back up a minute. It is early. One, two, three, four. We're only going to move four at this time because I want to make sure that uh, Vermoyden or whatever his name is can move up and help support Cromwell. One, two, three, turn for one, that's four, five, six, seven, and he'll turn for eight. That only costs one movement point to turn, uh, change your facing in a hex, uh, any direction. <clears throat> at the beginning of your turn, you can change freely, and at the end of melee, I think, you can change freely. Let me double check that after melee, yes. And then we'll bring up uh, Vermoiden or Vermoiden's uh, other dragoon. One, two, three. Let's go here. Let's start over. One. We'll turn for two. We'll enter the town for one. So that's three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, can't get it to turn. Can't get it into the hex and then turn. So I guess we'll go there and stop. And that pretty much ends turn one. I know, pretty simple, but when all you're doing is moving and you can't or won't engage the enemy, but you um, fulfill your orders and your command, that's the best you can do, I guess. Well, that was pretty rough. Sorry for that. Um, I'm going to finish drinking my coffee and maybe I'll wake up a little bit. And then we will go on to turn two. In which case, both sides receive reinforcements. Get up here. We will not get very good zoom or quality, of, quality on this long of a zoom. But anyway, both sides will receive reinforcements. Manchester for the uh, parliamentarians, and then is it Henderson. What's his name? Uh, I don't know what his name is. I think it's Henderson. Anyway, his force will be coming on board, and he is an overall leader, so he will be able to lend his benefits, being an overall leader, to uh, the royalist players. You know, his units that are subordinate. But on turn three, we get Fairfax for the uh, <clears throat> parliamentarians, and he'll be able to do the same. Anyway, we'll come back for turn two. Okay, game fix, issue five, March 1995. We are playing Rob Markham's Winsby. We are in the beginning, or at the beginning of turn two. First thing we are going to have is the orders phase. Players may attempt to change their 
current commands that each or any of their leaders are currently using. Um, I think we're going to stay with advance for the royalists. Uh, no units are out of command. He has a command span of three, but one, two. Well, I guess it helped if I showed you what was going on, right? It's just, it's imaginary theater. This unit is within command of his leader. His leader has a command span of three, but it's one, two, three, so he's well within his command span. Uh, let's see. Everybody's just going to have an advance as they come in, or yeah, advance. So that basically means that I have to move, I have to end the turn at least one hex closer. It does not mean that I cannot move away from a unit and then, you know, move closer towards the end of the movement uh, phase. So we are going to do something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unstack <clears throat> Witterington, however you pronounce his name. I'm going to leave him there. However, I'm going to freely turn this guy, since it's the beginning of the movement phase, I guess towards this vertex. I guess he's not really facing a vertex. Yeah, he is. So we're going to face this way for free, and then we're going to go one, two, either of the two frontal hexes. He's going to turn for three, and he's going to go four, and probably stop right there. Winterington is going to move up one, and then these two units are going to unstack free turn and they're going to go one into the frontal hex side two and then they're going to pivot for three this unit's going to pull up don't want to get too far away from the leader um, I think this unit will move uh, he'll turn freely for his in-hex uh, first movement. And then he'll go one, two, and then he'll turn for three. And this unit here will probably turn free. Uh, he'll stay where he is actually. One, two, three, and four. Well, there's no turning, so it's just that, four. Whatever, okay, we're gonna spread out our line, and next turn we're gonna hopefully um, change some orders. And I can tell you right now, I am out of command. Let's move this guy back over to here and over to here. I know they can make it movement point wise, so I'm not going to mess with it. Okay, then we have, and we'll move the camera over there. This is not radio theater. Uh, Seville. Bill, I think is his name. He's also uh, double stacked. One, well, there's one movement point. Two, three, well, if he stops here. Let's do that again. One, moving to the frontal flank, or frontal hexes. Two, three, and then he's got ten movement points. Three, Four, five, six, uh, six, seven. Don't want to move him all his movement points. Not sure how far I can get the other guys. And eh, whatever. These guys will move up. One, two, three, four. Five. And these guys should still be stacked. 
Then we have Henderson. Later on, his foot will be following up um, to support him and the royalist cause, but that's only determined by a die roll, and the odds of that happening are very low. In the battle, both players, or both sides' foot, um, had a hard time keeping up and uh, uh, keeping up with their cavalry and making it to the battle. So, what do we got here? I need to fill in this area here, I believe. And we're moving at an 10. 1, 2, 3, 2 and a half, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to drop off. I'm going to drop off the B unit. And last, but certainly no means least, as far as a Royalist player would go, we have Evan somebody. I'll have to look up his real name, or his full name. Uh, we are going to... We have more... Re well, this is pretty much it for the Royalist player, so he's got to, or he has to... Um... Put these guys probably in reserve next turn. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think we'll unstack. Drop him off the hex behind. Okay. Painful as that was, that is a royalist movement. Once again, there's nothing else uh, nothing else to be done. I can't change any of our orders. There's no uh, rallying to do or anything like that. So that's going to end it for the royalist uh, player turn on the second game turn okay back with the royal not royalist the parliamentarian half of turn two uh what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to try and change the orders of cromwell and of vermoiden 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 i don't know how to pronounce his name so i'm just going to go with vermoiden you know, if he wanted his name pronounced correctly, he would have picked one that was a little bit easier to pronounce. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to go to a stand command, if at all possible. So during the orders phase <coughs> of the parliamentarian player, we are going to have Cromwell attempt to change his command to uh, stand, as I previously indicated. Command span, the middle number is the command span, his command rating is to the left. Okay, so I got to roll equal to or less than um, five, and any of his units within four can uh, will have that new command. Well, since he's stacked with them, that's not going to be that difficult. Uh, stand command, all combat units in command using the stand command may move no more than one hex during the movement phase. Combat units receive a plus one die roll modifier during melee combat if defending. So this one does not say that I have to move closer to an enemy, I can just move one hex. So let's go ahead and roll and see if we can roll a five or less. Oh, we get to some action now. Let's see. I'm going to get out my handy dandy uh, die rolling containment system. Now all I need is the uh, the dice. Oh, here they are. So I need to roll a five or less. He's not within a com he's not within the command span of an overall leader because that uh, Fairfax is not on the board yet. So let's see what we can do here. 
minutes if I can keep it in the box. So, five or less, no other modifiers that I can think of. Uh, it's not like a muster command, which is an automatic. You can change to a muster command at any time. So, what do we roll? We roll a five. And I needed what? A five. So, five or less. He barely changes to a uh, stand command for his units. So we have Cromwell up there. We're going to move to a stand. All of his units now have a stand command. So during the movement phase and stuff, they will have to abide by that command. <clears throat> what else we got? Uh, let's see here. We have, uh, oh, what's his name again? Van Moyden. He is also going to attempt to put his leaders into... A stand command. Oh, sorry, that might have been a little loud. Uh, let's see what happens. He needs a three or less. And he fails tremendously. Oh no, I guess he succeeds. I'm not sure. I don't think that landed exactly flat, but just for exa just for um example uh reasons, we're gonna call that a three. Yes, it might not have been a three, but good enough for now. So both units have successfully changed their commands to stand. This is the stand column, so we just move them over there. Anybody else coming on board will be in the advanced command, under the advanced command, and that will be next turn. So I'm hoping that uh, these units can make it to next turn without any serious difficulty. All right, let's go over here. Let's take it down a notch. Okay, they can move one hex. So Cromwell is going to unstack free turn. And he, well, let's go up one, I guess, since I can't. If I free turn to here, I've got to turn back around. I can only move one. Well, one hex. It doesn't say how many movement points you can expend. And we are done with the command phase, right? The orders phase, sorry. And all units were in command. So I'm assuming that I can go into the front hex. One. Well, that's what I'll do. And then this unit will move its one uh, hex. Cromwell will stay with uh, Command A. Uh, this guy from Moyden will move. He'll just uh, de-stack. Move here. This horse will move here. And this horse will move here. And refuse to flank so to speak. Alright, we've made it through uh, two game turns without any serious violation of the rules, I hope. We'll play a couple more turns since the majority of the forces will be arriving soon. And then we can see uh, a little bit of combat, perhaps. So, I'll probably put this on another video. And I'm going to call this video good for now. And I will go back and review uh, all the mistakes that I made and hopefully correct them uh, by the next video. So we will talk at you later. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.